Yay, Lord Jesus, thank you, help us, amen. Good, all right. <laughs> Guess what? God is good, he is awesome, he is amazing, and I cannot wait to tell you how amazing he is and how amazing you are in him. But before we do that, we're all going to stand up and make a declaration, because y'all like sitting there like, you need to stand up and make a declaration, amen. Oh, I'm telling you what, we got to get ready for war. What do you think about that? Amen. If we don't fight, we lose. Say this with me. I am everything that God says I am. I can do everything that God says I can do. I'm righteous, holy, blameless, above his reproach. I know I kind of messed that up, so you guys got, you got some grace there, okay? You're going to pass on that one. Say, I'm quick, bright, sharp, good looking, very rich, and a major blessing. Amen. You can be seated. All right. Thank you for doing that. All right. That might have been more for me than you, but anyway, it made me feel good. So here we go. All right, last week we were talking about hell. We gave out this little book on hell. It gives you a bunch of scriptures on it, talking about it. And I think it's important that we understand this because every single person you know that's not born again ends up in this place. It is not somewhere you want to be. Amen. So if you were not here last week, you, there's some out there. If you're a tither, please pick one up. Your tithe's bottom so you can take them home. If you are not a tither, please pay for this. Amen. And uh, <laughs> because somebody else's tithe's paid for it. Amen. If you're new here and you think someday I'm going to come and be a tither, pick one up. Amen. We'll sow it into your life. All right, but if you want to pay for it, I don't know, three bucks, five bucks, something like that, I don't know, just give something, but get one. You want to know about this. Why? One, you're not going there, okay? If you're born again, this is not your place, but you know what? Uh, it is good to know about hell. Why? Because Jesus talked about hell. He had a lot to say about it. There's so much we did not get into, but I knew I was giving you this book so that you could get that. Now I'm going to talk to you about being undevourable undevourable. In other words, Satan wants to come. He wants to devour you. We'll be talking about that. But number two, I gave you this, and on the back is how to lead somebody to the Lord. We're also going to put something on the app or whatever. They told me that they could do something so that if you're going to lead somebody to the Lord, you'd be able to do it by getting on your phone. Now, I was leading people to the Lord before I knew any of these scriptures, and so can you. You can go up to somebody and say, I don't know what happened to me, but I gave my life to Jesus. My life changed, and you can do the same thing. Pray this, and they can get saved if they want to. You can do it. But here, this will just help you. There's some scriptures. John, this is called the Romans Road to Salvation, okay? Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you think about that. Every single person has sinned, everyone. And one little sin will send you to hell. How many of you know there's nobody on this earth they would go to heaven without Jesus because we have all sinned. Amen? Well, the gift of God is eternal life. Praise God, it says that. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And the th key there is gift. You can't earn this. You think about this. What are you going to be able to earn from heaven? It is so amazing. It's above your pay grade. Okay, you cannot earn heaven. You can only accept it by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'm going to talk about living up to our potential today to be undevourable. Why? Because we have Christ in us. We have his kingdom, everything given to us so we can act and walk like him. Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that's 13. But anyway, you'll get saved. So that's there for you and a prayer of salvation right on there so you can actually just have somebody follow you in that. Next thing we did is we did a movie on Friday night called nefarious i think it's a great movie people should watch it and for this reason um it, it, there were some key things that i just wrote down here as we were watching that movie and it was interesting because the warden there's a guy for those of you who don't know he's on death row he's going to be and he's demon possessed but the warden goes hey man you're going in there this guy is going to twist things around till you think you're the murderer and he's innocent 
One of the things you'll notice if you're dealing with somebody who's demon-possessed or somebody who's got demon influence in their life, it's amazing how they twist things around. And instead of dealing with themselves, rather than being able to answer questions, they twist things around and point it back to you. Well, in the name of Jesus, you just take authority over that and you can stop that. The, um, he said names have power, and they do. That's why at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. There is no name above that name. And we have that name. We get to use that name. I like this. The guy goes, well, if you're a demon, why don't you, you know, you just go possess somebody or you just go in. He goes, listen, it doesn't work that way. He goes, we need a series of yeses to be able to possess somebody. A series of yeses. You see, a series of yeses will open up the door to the devil, and so he doesn't care how long it takes. In fact, in this movie, he talked about, we've been grooming you since you were five years old. See, it's important what you allow in your home. It's important what you watch. It's important to the music you listen to. It's important to all these things. Why? Because a little yes will lead to another little yes, and he doesn't care if it takes 40 years or more to trap you as long as you Go to hell, that's all he cares about. See, nobody ever got addicted to pornography. Do you know that, like instantaneously, do you know the United States of America is the number one consumer of people? Sex trafficking, the United States of America, where we're free, this nation, where there's a church on every corner almost, this nation that was founded on God has gone so far that we're the number one consumer of people. How sick do you have to be to pay somebody to have sex with a child? That doesn't happen overnight, but it happens. Just a little pornography here, a little lust there. You know what? It might take years and years and years and years and years. Nobody gets into hardcore porn right away. It would be gross to you. But if you keep those yeses going up, pretty soon you could be to the place where you would buy a child to have sex with them. That is sick. And that's where our nation has gone. One of the things the guy says... You know, we're in a war. And he says, I didn't know that we're in a fight. And he goes, that's why you're losing. (laughs) You don't even know you're in a war. You don't even know you're in a fight. There's a book called Return of the Gods. I think everybody should read it. It makes so much sense on how crazy our world has become. It is one of the best books I've read in a long time. And it gives us the progression of our nation and the demons that have been released to be able to allow all these things to happen. And it is amazing. Now, the cool thing about it is this. If it's demonically influenced, I know how to get rid of it. The name of Jesus and the gospel getting out. And that's what we're doing. This next phase of our campaign is all about getting ready to do mass evangelism and getting the word of God out in all kinds of ways. In fact, uh, Saturday, um, we were out in the, in the park. Our, our team, I, didn't, I wasn't there, but my, my wife and I forgot who was all there. And, uh, but they were out ministering to people and kids in the community. And it was so cool. They had... Games with 120 donuts, okay? And these little kids are coming in. They're, they're doing face painting. And Marty, you probably had something to do with that. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, face painting. And then they had a prayer tent. And they're doing these types of things. You know what I mean? And they ran out of donuts. You know what I mean? And come on, somebody. 120 kids chewing on donuts and getting, getting prophesied over and prayed over. And, and they got like 150 uh, bags that had candy in it. And then they had other things that were preaching the gospel to them. And then a, a QR code so that they go there and learn how to get saved. Okay, yeah, come on. I'll, I'll give them donuts and candy, and here's a QR code. Grab your mom and dad's phone. Let's, let's, let's play with that. You know what I mean? They're going to they're gonna want to know what's on there. And then Jesus will come, you know what I mean? It comes up. You know what I mean? And there's a whole bunch of things why if we'll saturate our community with the gospel, that's what defeats Satan. I'll prove it to you in just a little while. (laughs) 
<laughs> the systematic plans have been laid out so well that most don't see it. That was another line in the movie. You know how many years? He didn't care how long it took. He just, he just took our nation that was founded on God to the place where it's very proudly displaying things that are against God. How did we get there? Because the church was asleep. That's how it got there. We were lulled to sleep rather than standing for what was right. When the Ten Commandments were taken out of public square, it made a difference in our nation. Why? Because God's Ten Commandments were the laws for society. This is how you live. This is, you know, and they're so basic. It's amazing. But you keep that in front of people all the time. You know what? They see that. They live by it, right? And when little kids, I remember seeing them when I was in school. And I remember doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, somebody, and praying in a public school. Wow, you know what? Different generation, right? Yeah. Now we got people doing mass shootings. You got to be demon possessed to go kill a bunch of people and then take your own life. That is so demonic. And that person went straight to hell. And Satan left. When I was a kid, we had rifle racks in our trucks. <laughs> I am serious. Serious, I would go to school and we had to put our rifles in the principal's office. I'm walking into school with a rifle to put it in the principal's office so I could go hunting after school. Come on. Nobody was thinking about shooting everybody. What changed? We got off from our foundation of the way our nation was created. We got away from God. When you get away from God, there is a substitute God. There is no neutral ground. It's the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. And our nation has gone to a place. Can it be reversed? If you and I will open our mouths, if we will pray, it will make a difference. How do I live a life that is undevourable? 1 Peter 5.8. I have 16 pages of notes. I got through a page and a half for a service. <laughs> 1 Peter 5.8, it says, this is the Amplified, and I added a little bit to it through my study and my notes, uh, you know, the books that I study from and stuff like this, and I'll tell you where it's at. It says, be well-balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant, and this, this, this is a note that I added, to be on watch as if in danger. That's what vigilant means. To be on watch as if in danger and cautious at all times for that the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion in fierce hunger seeking someone to seize upon and devour. What is Satan doing? He doesn't get to just devour whom he may. He's, he's, he's going around looking for those he can get to accept a yes. If he can get enough yeses out of you, he devours you. He eats your life. He sends you to hell. But we don't have to. Be well balanced, be temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant, be on the watch as if in danger, be cautious at all times. Cautious about what? Anything that's contrary to the will of God, the kingdom of God, and the word of God. Be aware of it. It goes on in verse 9. Now this is the King, New King James. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. How do you resist something? How do you resist someone? I think there's all kinds of ways. You know, people go, man, somebody's talking about you on Facebook. This is how I resist that. I block them, unfollow them. I don't listen. I'm not, I have no idea. I hear there's all kinds of people mad at me. I don't care. I don't listen. I'm not, I'm not reading what they write. I resist their influence. Well, how do you do that? It's easy. Unfollow. 
block. Done! My life is happy! <laughs> it's awesome. So freeing. How else can you resist somebody? You can physically resist. You can do this. You push against. You deny. You do all kinds of things. What are we supposed to do with the devil? Let's block him. Let's, you know, let's unfollow him. Let's just whatever. But to do that, you might have to change your lifestyle. Entertainment is a way that it gets small yeses into your life. Sometimes your friends you hang out with are small yeses to get into your life of compromise. Bad, bad company corrupts what? Good character, good morals, good habits. But a friend, like iron sharpens iron, the friend will sharpen the countenance of his friend. A real friend will sharpen you to become better. You might not like it. Ow! Yeah, but now I'm sharper. Okay, good! Yeah, you've been in the Word, you've been doing this, they're always asking you questions, and you're blah, blah, blah. they're like, hey, watch your mouth, hell's coming out right now. <laughs> By complaining and whining and doing all these things. You see, anything that is against God's kingdom, His Word, against His Lordship is evil. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a little while. Don't you just hate it when that is in the Bible? <laughs> that that suffering will perfect you, establish you, and strengthen you, and settle you. The, you know, when, when, when Satan has society itself coming against you, how many know you're going to suffer persecution when you stand up? Plain and simple. When you stand up and say, that is not right, that's not righteous, that is just no. They ask you your opinion and you go, well, I believe God says this. The world will not like whatever comes next. No matter what it is. Are you willing to suffer at that point? Are you willing to stand for what's right even though they'll mock you, yell at you, scream at you, do whatever? It's not easy. But if you'll take your imagination and just see yourself responding in a righteous, good way and standing for the word of God, you'll get there. You see, we're in a war, we're in a battle. God says in Ephesians 6, 10, he says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, all the things going on right now, all these things going on in our world. I mean, you look at the world right now, it is crazy. You see the demonic influence all around. People, the whole world is coming against Israel. Now, check this out. Is any nation perfect? No. Is anybody perfect in this? No. Are, are any governments perfect? No. But what country warns people before they come in and bomb them? Israel literally will drop a false bomb to go, it's coming, please leave. They Send them messages. We're going to come to this area. We're going to drop bombs in this area. Please evacuate. Why? Because they have a moral compass based on the word of God that they do not want to kill innocent people. And the world hates them for that. That's how far our world has gone. It's gone crazy. If you stand up for... Uh, for uh, a godly marriage, you know, or what is, what is that, you know, the traditional, that there is real man and there is a real woman, you're going to get persecuted. God made them male and female. There are two genders. End of story. 
And they come up with all kinds of things to make you feel stupid if you believe in more than two, more, if you don't believe in more than two genders. Biology says there's two. I don't have to be hateful, but I do stand for truth. I wore this, I, I fight this battle by putting on God's armor. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness and hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. He's talking about times like what we're in. Put on the armor of God. Let's stand. We can take authority over the devil. We can make things happen. We can make a difference if we'll get the word of God out there, if we'll witness to people, we'll share God's goodness, if we'll pray for people. The wiles means stratagem, which is a military maneuver designed to deceive or suppress an enemy. That's what Satan's trying to do, deceive and suppress you, make you afraid, make you shut up, make you not have a stance. Remember what Goliath did to the armies of Israel? He had them so backed in a corner that the whole armies are cowering and hiding and David shows up. David spent his time meditating. David was a warrior. David protected his sheep, killed a lion and a bear. David was just like, whatever. He shows up and the first thing he's, he goes, he goes, who is this uncircumcised Philistine defying the armies of the living God? Different perspective. He had a different perspective, which carried then an anointing. David didn't win the battle by his prowess with a, with a sling. He did it by the anointing, and he declared the anointing of God. This day, my God will deliver you into my hands, and I'll cut off your head, and I'll feed you to the beasts of the fields and the birds of the air. This day, my God will deliver you into my hands. What are we saying David had a different result because David had a different word in his mouth. He had a different belief about he, who he was. Joshua and Caleb going into the promised land, they had a different heart. They had a different thing about it. And you and I have a born-again heart. We have the heart of God. We have something different inside of us, and we can stand when nobody else will. And we'll carry an anointing that nobody else can because we will declare the word of God. Declare the word of God. Joshua and Caleb came back and said, look at all this. They're bread to us. In other words, he's going like, not only are we going to clean up, we're making a sandwich when we're done. <laughs> this is going to be easy. And they're the only two that went in out of that whole generation of people. Why? Because they said something different. In the face of great opposition, the whole nation was in fear. And this is after God did the Red Sea thing. He delivered them and there was no sick. He brought them out rich. And then they face a little opposition and they fall apart. Why? Because they still had a slave mentality. You see, if you have a slave mentality, you can get around some people maybe and get a little bit encouraged, but if you have a slave, poverty, poor, weak mentality, the devil's going to eat your lunch. You've got to change that. Hebrews 12, listen to this, I love this. You ready? I've got to find it, but I love it. Listen to this. I'm going to put on my glasses so I can read it. It says, therefore, also, since we are surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our, of our faith, uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God's throne. Therefore, since we have this cloud of witnesses that we're surrounded by, let us lay aside every weight and every sin, that it easily ensnares us. Every weight and every sin. A cluttered life, you got to get rid of it. Sin, get it out of your life. Like I said, he just needs a series of little yeses. 
And that's the sin that we allow. Now, are you going to be perfect in your life? You can be in your heart. You can say, I live for Jesus, and I'm pursuing him. As you do that, step by step, he'll take you, and your life should just be better and better and better and better. Year after year after year after year, you look more like Jesus. Now, in Hebrews 11, it talks about the heroes of faith. I love this whole chapter. And it talks about, you know, faith is the substance things hope for. It goes on. It talks about all these people that by faith, you know, what they did. Abel offered a more uh, excellent sacrifice. Enoch didn't see death. You know, Abraham, Noah, all these people. But Sarah received a child at uh, 90 years old. You know, all these died in faith not having attained the promises. You know what I mean? And it goes on. And it says this in verse 13. It says, all these died uh, in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. And I think that's a big thing. We need to use our imagination and keep ourselves in remembrance that this is the shortest part of our eternity. This world is not the one that we live for. We live in it. God gave us this world to richly enjoy. He gave us people to encourage us and to love and to do these things. It's not talking about not having the pleasure. It's not talking about loving people. It's not talking about that kind of stuff. But this is the, not the one we live for. We live for eternity. We get to lay up treasures there. We are setting our course for eternity. Live like you are. Your retirement plan is eternal. Amen. Living for the kingdom of God is the most important thing. The rest of this hands out amen it says truly if they had called to mind what that country from which they had come out of they would have had opportunity to return and that's exactly what he's talking about don't look at your past life as the best part of your life it's not don't look at this world as the best part of your life because it isn't in fact, in that book, in this book, you'll find scriptures that say that in hell, they remembered their life on earth. Why? Because it was the best part of their life. In heaven, we won't even remember this earth. Why? Because it is absolutely the worst part of our life. That's how good heaven is. You will look at your best days on earth as something to be forgotten. That's how good your life will be. You know, when you're in the best and you're good, you don't remember the bad. That's what heaven is going to be like. It goes on, and, you know, down here it says, by faith the walls of Jericho came down. Isn't it interesting, by faith? How does faith come? In hearing by? So can I answer that phone? Whose phone is it? I want to talk to whoever that is trying to call in during service here. No, I can't? Oh, well. Okay. I would love to do that, by the way, <laughs> like literally answer your phone if it was. But if you could shut your phones off, that would be nice. By faith, the walls of Jericho, Jericho fell down. By faith, by knowing the word, what did God say? And you and I, how do we become people of faith? We have to know what the word of God says. Otherwise, we won't be able to resist the devil. You know what? How did David go? How, how can this uncircumcised Philistine defy the armies of the living God? Why? Because he knew what the word of God was. He knew who God was. And he took his faith and he says, I'm going to declare something here. What is your declaration over your life? What is the things that you're saying about yourself? Are you the best lawyer that's ever going to be in the whole entire universe? Come on, baby. You got it. Yeah, I just called her baby. Okay, anyway, she's, <laughs> she's my friend. I can do that. All right, so, you know, I mean, it's like she's, she feels called to be a lawyer. Be the best one that God has ever made. You know what I mean? Go for it. Do it. Whatever you're going to do, you know what I mean? Do it with everything in you. What did God create you for? Don't look at things. Don't look at your life as like incomplete or a failure or anything. You were created for greatness. God put his life inside of your kingdom, his kingdom inside of you. You're greater than all the kingdom of Satan. Satan's, the anointing in you is greater than anything that Satan can release. Goes on and says, and what shall I say? For the time would not fail me. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. How? By faith. By knowing what God's will was. By knowing what God said. 
worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped by the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Quen quenched the violence of fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Quenched, stopped the mouth of lions, David, come on somebody. Escaped the edge of the sword, you know, uh, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Shall we just maybe assume that God wants us to live greater lives than what we can by ourselves? Too many of you are letting your sin dictate your future. Well, I did this. So what? That's what the blood of Jesus took care of. You start from right this moment going forward. You can't undo any part of your past. Don't even look at it. Learn lessons from it and go forward. Well, I did this and I'm no good and blah, 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 and how could God love me? I'm just a sinner. I'm all good. Would you stop it? You got born again. If you're born again, you're wall to wall Holy Ghost. You got God inside of you. He said he made you righteous. He made him, Jesus, to be no sin, that you might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Start taking the word of God. Get it into you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And start resisting the devil by the things you say, the way you live. Come on, somebody. I don't want to hear poor out of your mouth ever again. Say, I'm rich. Why? Because God said so. Say, I'm healed. Why? Because God said so. I'm bright because he says he made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. I'm smart. I have a bunch of abilities. God created me in this world for a reason. Amen. You were born in this generation for a reason. Amen. We're not placed here because God said, you know what? That group of people, I'm just going to wipe them out by the plans of the devil. I'm just going to let them get devoured. No way. He said, these people are ready for whatever hell will release. That's you and me. Put on the armor and let's do it. This is good preaching. <laughs> the word of God, I should have looked it up, but I didn't. It's somewhere... In the Old Testament, you know, you only have 44 books to read to figure it out or whatever. So anyway, so, <laughs> they limited the Holy One of Israel. Taylor's going to tell me what it is in about 10 seconds. And Psalm 78. You limited the Holy One of Israel. How do we limit God? Anybody, how do we limit God? Not believing, lack of faith. Yes. Come on, Jesse! God gave you an imagination. You need your imagination to have faith. And unfortunately, too many times we use our imagination to picture destruction, defeat, fear. Our imagination is to take the word of God and imagine giants falling. Now, the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be before the Son of God returns. Okay, there was giants in the land. I wonder if we're going to have giants again. Can you imagine Nephilim coming in? And you know what? And then you and I go, I am more. <laughs> These giants better be afraid of me because I carry the Holy Ghost. All I need to do is pick up a stone, baby. Can you imagine being anointed like um, Saul's son? Jonathan takes his armor bearer and he says, hey, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole troop of them up there. Him and his armor bearer, it says that the only people that had swords were Saul and Jonathan. They had one sword. And they're going like, hey, I got a plan. Armor bearer goes, what is it? He says, 
we'll show ourselves to them. And if they say, come up here, that means God has given them to us. You got a sword? Hey, let's do it. All right, come on. You know what I mean? And so they show themselves, and the army goes, come on up here. We'll show you something. And Jonathan goes to the armor bearer, and the armor bearer is, armor bearer is crazy enough to go, let's go do it. Said they had to crawl with both their hands and feet to get up there. And it says that they fell before them. What kind of anointing do you need? You just need some crazy friends that'll say, hey, maybe Michigan can get saved. Maybe we can do that. Hey, I'm your crazy friend. All right? I believe we can make it hard to go to hell from Michigan. Yeah? Come on. I got a sword. Woo! Right here, we're going to preach the gospel. It's going to tick a lot of demons off, so get ready for it. How about if we do it, though? It'd be a lot of fun. Come on. If you've never been in a good fight, it's kind of fun. Come on, somebody. But we got to know our word because you can't be in faith without knowing the word. So start reading your Bible every day because we got to get ready. Start confessing. Get the book in him by Kenneth Hagin. I don't know. We've got some, but if you're a tither, you can take one home. If you're not, you can buy one. <laughs> I'm serious. Your tithe bought it. You can take it home. <laughs> If you're new here and you're not born again, you could take one home. My tithe would take, you can have mine. All right, there you go. But there's a little book called In Him. You can get it online or whatever. It will go through all the scriptures in your Bible about who you are in Christ, and you should be meditating on those things every day. I do it every day. I meditate on who I am in Christ. Why? Because I know I have to be strong. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might so I can put on his armor and fight. There's a lot of injustice going on in our world. Can we stand up? We need to. Is it going to be unpopular with the world? How do you know you're ticking the devil off? He will be mad at you. Good. He just manifests through people, and sometimes that can hurt. Oh, well, you go to God, get your heart healed, keep going. Keep going forward. Amen? Sawyer. Come on up. <laughs> Sawyer's telling me I'm done. <laughs> Don't worry, I got 17 pages of notes, and, and we got through one and a half. There's a lot to say, and I've got seven ways for you to receive grace, and I'll talk about that, because faith releases grace, and when you receive grace, you're going to be strong in every area. Amen? We need the grace of God. Why? Because in yourself, you go to hell. With Jesus, you become more than a conqueror. By yourself, your righteousness is useless. With Jesus, you're more than a conqueror. You're righteous. You're holy. You're blameless. You're his kid. You get to act like him. Just like Taylor was talking about. Let's play that song. We're going to sing a song. When we sing this song, I want you to just start thinking about your life. If you've opened up the door to the devil by small yeses and you got sin, you get to close that door really hard right now. You get to go, Lord, I've been judgmental. I've been bitter. I forgive. I do whatever. You've opened up the door to pornography, addictions to anything or something like that. And you go, I close that door right now. You've been unfaithful. Today, you start to be faithful. You haven't been reading your word. Just repent. Boom, Lord, I'm now into my... You just, whatever sin is in your life. We all got them. And this is something good to do all the time. Lord, forgive me. Even though he already did. I'm righteous. I'm washing the blood. 
It's an act of honor. Lord, I've been acting outside of your will. And I just ask you to forgive me because it hurts my relationship with you. It's not that you didn't pay the price for me. I know I'm in relationship with you, but I'm hurting that relationship by my sin. And I ask you to just forgive me for hurting our relationship. I apologize to Conley all the time. Why? Because I love my relationship with my wife. I wouldn't have to. She'd forgive me. But it helps the relationship. So I want you to do that as we start to sing this song. And I just feel like there's some people here you need to be set free from some demonic strongholds in your life. You've opened up the door of the devil and you got sin you just can't get rid of. Over and over and over again, you don't want it in your life. I'll pray with you. I don't want to embarrass you, but if you, if you want me to pray with you, I'll be up here and I'll pray with you. But it is this simple as as we take communion, I will break the power of Satan off your life. So as we take communion, you do all those things. You can just say, devil, I will not submit to you. You get out of my life. I repent from opening that door and I turn my back on you and I turn my heart totally towards God. I guarantee you when you take communion, there's going to be a deliverance that takes place. If you need a little extra, I'll pray with you. Let's stand up. They're going to sing, and during the first half of the song, or first portion of it, you just get your heart clean with God. And then when you do that, take the bread and take the cup of the wine, and just, this is it. His body was broken so that you could be in unity, so that you could be one with the body. His blood was shed so that you could be free from sin, and that's what this represents. It is powerful. If you're not born again, everybody pray this with me right now. If you want to get saved, you pray this out loud and you mean it. And everybody else pray it so that they got a harmony of people praying with us. Say, Dear God, I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. And I've sinned and I need to be forgiven. You said in your word, if I would call on the name of the Lord, I would be saved. So, Lord Jesus, I surrender. I surrender to you. I will not live for myself. I will not live for the devil. I will not live for this world. I choose to live for you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for receiving me. And I ask that you fill me with your spirit so I can live this life successfully. Amen.